How do you go about grading a shot that you don't know what camera came from and you don't know what log profile it was shot with? That's one of the questions that I get the most here on YouTube. So I decided to make a new series where I blind grade some of your clips. So I asked out on my Instagram if someone had a clip that they could send me without telling me what camera and log profile it was shot with. And for the first clip, Matt was super helpful to send me a clip. Now I have a little bit of an idea of what camera it might be shot with because Matt is one of my students and I kind of know what he already shoots with, but I don't know if he tricked me and it's one of his French shots as well. So I'm gonna put it into computer and pretend that I have no idea and show exactly how I would go about grading something that I don't know where it came from. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at it. All right, so I've just jumped straight into DaVinci Resolve and I've just imported the clip. This is the second time I see the clip. The first time was when I downloaded it, but I've never had it inside DaVinci Resolve before. So just having the clip in the timeline, I'm going to head into the color page. I am just going to remove the clips here in the gallery so we have a little bit more space to work with. Now, the most common question here is how would I go about grading this clip? And the first thing is, of course, the conversion. That's where it gets the most tricky because how do we know what camera it was shot with. Now, one thing we could do was always try and figure out just from the file name and see if there's some metadata that shows how it is. But if you don't have any of that, how would you go about it? Now, I would first of all go into effects and then take a color space transform. Now, where the issue becomes is what do we put into the color space input and input gamma. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put my output to Rex 9 and gamma 2.4 to know where it's ending up. Now, what I would do is I would see what the shot looks like when I'm trying different color profiles. So I would always start with the most common ones since it's not a drone clip, you can scratch out DJI. But what I'm going to try first is going with Sony. So let's take Sony S Gamut 3 and Sony S Log 3 and see what that looks like. Okay, so that gives us kind of a dark starting point and we could probably fix this with some exposure adjustments. So let's just take a snapshot and call it S log 3. Now we could try and test out with S log 2 and see how that looks. That gives us a softer starting point. This could actually be a pretty good conversion. So let's just try and save this one, S log 2. And now, as I said in the beginning, this shot came from Matt, shout out to Matt. And I think he's shooting with Canon. So I started with Sony. I would probably always start with Sony because we have more Sony shooters for video than we have Canon, I think. But let's try and do a Canon Cinema Gamut, which might not be the case that it's shot with. It might be shot with Rec. 709 here. And then it's just Let's try Canon Log 3. Now, already here we see a boost in color. We didn't see a big change from S Log 2, but I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna grab a still again, and I'm gonna say C Log 3 Cinema Gamut, because that was what I chose. Now I'm gonna try with Rec. 709 instead, and that gives us a very flat profile, so that's definitely not the case. So back to Cinema Gamut. I think this is our best starting point, and I was kind of assuming that he shot this with a Canon camera, and I've been suggesting that he shoots in Canon Cinema Gamut as well. I think he figured that out for himself as well. So I think this is a starting point, but this is the exact process that I would go by. And what's important to mention here is, this is what gives me the best starting point. I still don't know if he shot it with Canon or not, but since this looks the best to start out with, this is where I would go from. And one important thing to know is that these conversions are, of course, trying to convert it as perfectly as possible in an ideal situation, but we still need to do some great and some correction before the clip anyway. So it makes sense that we get the best possible conversion in the beginning, but if you can't get that and you don't know what you're working with, a good starting point is just trying out the different combinations. You could also try and look up what the Lumix ones are from Panasonic or Fujifilm or whatever else it might be if you don't get something that looks nice from the beginning here. From here, what I would do is I would try and slap on one of my LUTs here. So I would go into Creative Lots. Let's see if Hollywood could work for this one. I think so far that looks like it could give us a good starting point. So this would be our lot. It also adds some contrast that's built into this lot, so we don't have to focus on that. And then we will just go with some exposure and some balance, which would be the last things that I would do with this clip, apart from maybe some masking if we have time. So in terms of exposure, I would just try and raise it here with my offset a little bit. See if we can get it to a nice place. The skin tones I want to be lying around 70. They're lying around 60 now. So let's raise the gamma a little bit here. See where that becomes. Now they're lying around the 70. And let's just lower the lift a little bit to get some of those shadows back and balance it out by playing around with the shadows and the highlights here. 
just moving things kind of back and forth to see where we are. We are between 60 and 70 now and it's a little bit darker. So I think this looks pretty good. And then for the balance, I just want to go into my vector scope here and I want to pull that up big so I can see what I'm doing. And the skin tones look like they're lying pretty well. They're almost on the line, but a little bit more to the green side. So let's take our offset here and just see if we remove a little bit of green. They become slightly more magenta, looking a little bit more like skin tones. And we could also just drag out a little bit of the red and add a little bit of blue to kind of cool it down a little bit. And now we have some pretty nice skin tones, maybe slight bit more blue here. Something like this. I think that looks pretty good. The Hollywood is supposed to give a little bit of a warmer tone, but that's a little bit too warm. We want things to look kind of neutral in the scene as well. And one last thing that we could do, let's clean up the note graph here, is just add an inside and an outside mask here just to make it completely final. So inside, adding a circular mask here and dragging that around our nice little food here. I'm actually getting hungry now just looking at this. Uh, let's just have it in 100, but we want just like 50. And giving it a little bit more contrast here by just making a slight S-curve. Seeing what we get. Get that looking really crispy and nice. I think that really helped the shot a little bit. And then into the outside note, I think I'm just going to turn down the overall gamma a little bit. Losing a little bit of that skin tone, but just also turning down everything. Making this wrap or this pizza bread, whatever it is, look really good. So... That is pretty much how we'd go about it. This is what we started with, and this is what we got now. There might be a little bit too much lost in the shadow area here, so we could try and in our exposure here to pull up our shadows a little bit more to gain some of that back and then pull down our highlights a little bit again, just to kind of balance out that we're losing detail in the shadows. And with that saved, I think we're pretty good now. I think it looks pretty good. We could do more, but for a quick showcasing of how I would go about blind grading a clip. This is pretty much the process that I would go through, maybe tweaking and adjusting a few more things, but really playing around, first of all, with the conversion here, seeing what works best, trying different conversions into Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. From there, adding a lot, doing our grading, adding an adjustment for exposure and for balance, and then adding an inside and an outside node to really pull down and pull in the look overall, putting more focus on the food here, which is our subject in this case. So with that said, that is how we'd go about grading something like this. Now, this was the first episode in this series. I plan to do a lot more. If you're interested in sending me a clip, leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to see if we can do something and get a retransfer link with a clip, which I don't know which is coming from. If you want to see me try and grade it without knowing where it comes from, let me know in the comments and we'll look at it. So all that said, I'll catch you in the next one.